Okay. We're just gonna name this Amber Turd. Okay. What? Amber Turd. Yeah. Although I'm not coming down on either side. Oh really? Of the what? Oh really? You're gonna play it safe? I don't necessarily know. It's playing. It's I, okay, I mean, hold it. They're both. Hold it. Don't talk. Save it. Save it for the pod. 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 We're saving our good takes for the pod or our e- bad takes. This pod only gets our best takes. Even our bad takes are probably actually. Ironically, our bad takes are our best takes. See this hump I got? It's so I can store up my takes for an entire week in a desert <laughs> of takes. Only two to weeks on the podcast. Oh, yeah, it's been two weeks. Hey. Yeah, because we took a week off. Hey, everybody. Thanks for uh, taking a week off with us for Jared's bachelor party. Yeah, uh, thanks for your vacation and happy bachelor party, Jared. Nothing terrible happened, but we had the best schnitzel I've had in my life, probably. Yeah. My glasses are bugging me. Wait, wait, wait. Before we do all that. Yeah. Hey, Internet. Hi, Internet. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for episode 208. 207, bro. 207. Fuck. 207. Dude, are you ready for me to just be like greasy face this entire episode? Yeah. This is I all am. stuff I should have done in preparation before the podcast. Showered? You, you shower before you podcast? Well. Towel down a bit? Full disclosure, I shower right after the podcast because I get so sweaty with all these hot takes. Yeah, these hot takes burning Blue, me up inside. Uh, hey, this is the uh, podcast where we look at the things that made people mad online this week and explain why they're dumb for caring. I'm your co-host, Eric Bolin. I'm your other co-host, Dale DeRuder. And yeah, as, it is 207. As Dale was saying, we were off last week and I know you all missed us a whole fucking bunch because uh, it was my brother's fucking bachelor bunch. party. Uh, yeah. We went to Qualicum Beach, which uh, loyal listener Tanil informed me was the uh, municipality with the oldest age per capita in all of Canada. And from is- the fucking driving, I would believe it. It's <laughs> funny because we got off the ferry and we drove from the Nimo to Parksville. And as soon as we got to Parksville, you're like, there's this like oceanside highway you're riding along. The ocean's on your right. The sun's setting. I'm like, this is fucking magnificent. It was beautiful. I would fucking move here. I'd give it all up and I move here. And then the car in front of me was going five under the speed limit. And I'm like, fuck Parksville. I'm never living here. This place is a dump. <laughs> and then you, you got to drive proceeded- so slow, Parksville. You basically spent the next three. We were on this uh, like dope kind of commune Airbnb thing with like a bunch of like outdoor games and indoor games with 12 dudes. Uh, but every Corn time we hole. left, every time. Yeah, we were cornholing. Every time we <laughs> left the compound, Dale just like immediately got road rage mm-hmm. uh, from having to drive so slow behind people. Yeah, it was it was. Unreal. I just I don't understand. <laughs> Fucking like unreal. why you got it. I get not going too fast because you don't want to get a speeding ticket and i get driving to the safety of the roads but under the speed limit is unacceptable because they Some build the roads just... so you can drive safely up and like ambulances drive faster and they're not just like fucking flipping over in the ditch some people some people i think are just more generally risk averse and then based on how old people drive I'm just going to assume that like once you hit like 60, 65 years old, all of a sudden 30 kilometers an hour feels like 80 <laughs> kilometers an hour. <laughs> and you're like, you think you're speeding and yeah. y- your eyes are old and shitty. So they can't make out the speedometer anymore, but actually you're going slow as fuck. It just feels incredibly fast because you're hurtling towards death. That's true. You're like, I don't have very many days left, so I want to just drink them up like they're a chunky milkshake. <laughs> they're like, we didn't even have 80 kilometers when I was your age. <laughs> we could only get our horses to, to drag our cars <laughs> up to 50 kilometers an hour. That was it. That was all <laughs> we had. Anyway, so we had yeah. a good bachelor party. Uh, it was with uh, me, me and Dale and two of our other friends, 
uh, were in the the self designated old guys room. Old and, guys uh, rule. The most discouraging thing to me was like seeing these thirty year olds wake up after drinking and doing God knows what else until 4 a.m., waking up at like 7 or 8 in the morning with Pep in our staff. And meanwhile, like, Dale and I didn't drink a fucking thing the whole weekend, and we're crawling out of bed at like 9, 30, 10, haggard as shit, just because we're hungover on yeah. life. I was like, I ate too much salt. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> snacks got me again. Out. And these kids are like, what are we doing today? Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> We have so much energy. We're so full of promise. I think that's why old people just hate the young. Yeah. Because once you hit like our age, I imagine it doesn't get any better and probably only gets worse. So you wake up even like more tired and more sore. So you just yeah. hate the youth yes. even more. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That's going to be that's we're just going to like feel progressively shittier. It's like today you and and me and Kate and Andrea know we went out for like what an hour long walk and yeah. then we went and like grabbed sandwiches and then I came home and I was like I am fucking exhausted and I napped for an hour and a half from a Dope. walk and sandwiches that was it that was all I did and I was like I needed I needed a nap yeah I, we were driving home and I looked at the clock and it was like 2:20 I was like oh there's still so much day left. We did all that. It's only 2.30. And then Andrew's like, why? What are you going to do with the rest of your day? I was like, mm, probably play video games till I podcast. And that's what I did. Nice, bro. Yeah. Playing some Phoenix Point. I don't know what that is, but it has a cool name. Um, Shit. What was that? Oh, this would be really good. Um, There's an old game. There's a game. It's like turn-based strategy. Oh. XCOM. It's by the same people who made XCOM and it plays exactly like an XCOM game. Wait, like XCOM you... from the 90s? Maybe. Was it? XCOM 3 was out like a couple of years ago and it's turn based stra turn based strategy, but in this one you're fighting human shellfish mutants instead of aliens. It's pretty yeah, fun XCOM, I to get. UFO Defense published in 1994. I remember playing that game. Oh, yeah. 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 So it's like the same as that. Because they had one, I think it was called XCOM 3 was the last one I played or four, three or four. It's the one where the skull or an alien face made out of skulls on the cover. I played that one. And then this is just like, it's like the spiritual successor, I want to say. So like, it feels like the same game. It's just a complete new storyline and different characters. Dope. Yeah. What are you playing? Mr. Uh, I got an Xbox now. Well, just fucking Madden and uh, MLB, the show. I exclusively play sports games and Forza Horizon. Uh, Which and is what technically else? a sports game. Oh, I allowed my uh, eight-year-old son to play Fortnite for the first time. Uh, this, he was sick on Friday, so I let him stay home. And I was like, fuck, play, play Fortnite if it keeps you out of my shit. And he's like fucking obsessed. And I was watching him play, and I was like, this does look really fun. And then I go on and play. We've and played I just, Fortnite. Like, yeah. We played yeah. like back in the day because I had it on my switch uh, oh, and then yeah. I like I log in and I like promptly get my deck handed to me by mm -hmm. 10 year olds who call oh, me yeah. homophobic slurs. And I'm just like, those okay. little rat bastards, don't they know what's up now? <laughs> but those kids are waking up six in the morning, full of energy, ready to take on the world playing Fortnite, and i'm like i need a fucking nap after this because i'm old <laughs> I, I played Fortnite so hard i needed a nap oh, did I you play the no build how they have the new Fortnite where they don't have building in it no i haven't yet i just don't build ever yeah i feel like it's distract i just like it's to like, run around and shoot people but so that's why you'd want to play the no build because then nobody else will build either yeah but even if they yeah. build, it's like, whatever, you're building your shit and I'm shooting you poorly. Shooting I'm not at. good at it. doesn't matter if they're like <laughs> build or no build. I'm still mm -hmm. dog shit at the game. And my reflex speed is like a tenth as fast as your random eight year old child's. It's why I'll That's play uh, same thing. MLB the show. I'll play against yeah. Noah. And it's like it's a baseball game. So yeah. These pitches are coming in and Noah's just getting like perfect hit timing every time. And I'm like, how the fuck are you doing that? Because 
my hits are like almost invariably like way too fast or way too slow because my reaction speed is dog shit. And he's yeah. like, he's like, I don't know. I'm just hitting the button. And I'm like, how are you so much better than me at this game? It's because he can react, uh, mm. react faster than I can. Yeah, I've, 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 I downloaded MLB. I haven't played it yet. I do want to play it. I do like baseball games. Um, it's going to be one like of those things a little too sim for me like as soon as sports games get too simulatory and not enough arcadey then i'm just like this seems like a chore like i started mlb the show and i got to the tutorial and it's like pick what type of gameplay you want I was like, yeah this can't be good and it's like you have to pick what type of pitching you want what type of fielding you want what type of batting you want it's just like jesus just fuck i guess it makes sense because yeah, there's but so give, many different ways to play. But. Well, that's the thing. They want to like offer like something to the casual gamer who's just looking for that arcade experience. But they also like the guys who are fucking big into it and want to, you know, have control over every little aspect of their mm. swing or their fielding. Uh, it gives them an opportunity. It's, it's a fucking it's a really fun game. So, yeah, I'm going with the simplified version, but I haven't actually played played it yet. I've been playing this Phoenix point thing. Build a team. Let's play, bro. Dude, we should. Let's I'll, ball I'll play, out. I'll play. It'll be the Dales versus the Derricks. Let's ball out. As the PG. What What are you going to name your team? It's. I already have one. It's the Philadelphia Johns. John. Like J-A-W-N. Yeah, John is this word in Philly that can basically mean anything. It's like. What? Well, yeah. Okay, like, you hey, have to explain this. Get a little list, John. Like that. Oh, so it's like that's, fucko. Yeah. Yeah, it can it can mean like a positive thing or a negative thing. Uh or oh, so it's like it's not like fucko because fucko is usually um negative. Okay, I'm gonna name my uh, team the fuckos. I've been using fucko. I don't think you can do it. They'll probably ban you. I'll that. try. Try it. Okay, I won't. I won't. Oh, and then eight year old kids will be like, This guy swears we better not call him homophobic <laughs> slurs. I called the guy fucko at work. It was great. Like, um, this was a while ago. One of the guys who me we we like had like a friendly beef with where we'd always just like yell and swear at each other. You sure it was a friendly beef? You well, sure quit, it was so joking? Oh, out. damn. Yeah. But anyways, you get he, slapped with a bullying lawsuit or anything. <laughs> he was in the way. And I was like, move your forklift, fucko. And there's this guy and he was like, did he just call him fucko? And I was like, oh, shit. Was I not? Is that what we do? We're in the trades. We call each other names. Yeah. I mean, that is. don't tell me that half the reason I'm in trades, dude, if the if trades are going soft, the liberals have won. That's it. Right. Those libtards. Telling me I can't call my co-workers fucko no more. This is the world libs want. One where men in trades can't call each other fucko. <laughs> hey, speaking, speaking of libtards. Yo. I, oh, wait. Why? What, what are you pivoting wait, to? I was going to pivot to Elon second. Musk. Oh, yeah. Go for it. Because, okay. This is my whole standing on Elon Musk buying Twitter. I'm like... I'm not for or against it. I'm kind of excited that less people will get banned on Twitter. And then all these left people are like, this is the end of everything. It's going to be so bad. I'm like, it's not going to change. It's just another rich guy who owns a company. That's what it is right now. Like everybody's like, we can't. It's like, it's weird because they have this like cognitive dissonance where they're like, we can't let Elon Musk own this. He's going to like allow bad things to happen and it's like is it gonna be worse than the current they're censoring everybody who doesn't fall in line type of deal they're not what the fuck world do you live in where they're censoring everybody <laughs> okay well not censoring line. everybody that doesn't fall I can, in line but i can like, go on to twitter right now and show you a hundred examples of over racism that have been tweeted in the past really? hour that people oh yeah fuck yeah man i haven't seen over racism that's but like I always see both mm. both sides of it, like the people flipping out about Twitter censorship and people flipping out about Elon Musk owning Twitter are just different sides of the bullshit culture war where it's like, oh, the other side is winning and we can't allow that. It's like <laughs> fucking like, OK, yes, people got banned from Twitter, uh, but it was normally for violating very clearly articulated policies that a lot of. Oh, yeah, normally. Have. 
until you got like when they could when you couldn't tweet a link to the Hunter Biden laptop, which just turned out to be real. Nobody gave a fuck about what you could tweet a link to the Hunter Biden. No, you laptop. couldn't. There's a New York Post article on the laptop that coming up to the 2020 election. If you linked it, Twitter wouldn't allow you to link it. They would just like expunge the tweet from the face of existence and you couldn't put it on Facebook because they would just, they're so scared that Trump was going to be Biden that they're like, we can't let people know about this laptop. Yeah. But Twitter whatever. doesn't care. Like fucking. They cared enough to censor that tweet. Because it was. <laughs> they didn't what? care about Trump beating Biden. That's like yeah. an absurd thing. Like why does Jack Dorsey CEO of a company not want the political party that is notoriously pro big business mm -hmm. to lose the election. Well, he, it, he doesn't give a fuck either way. It's Twitter was just trying to appease the most people it could at once. So it was trying to appease like, all the people with Trump, Trump derangement syndrome. So they're like, we'll just fucking, we'll get rid of this. We got to get rid of, which is fine. Trump was a crazy asshole and I'm glad they got rid of him, but they still shouldn't, they should have still figured out what was going on with this laptop. Uh, oh, my, okay. The point I was trying to make was the cognitive dissonance was everybody was always like, it's a private company. You could do whatever you want. And then Elon buys it and they're like, wait, not like that. Not like that. It's a private company and they could do whatever they want. What? I just, I don't understand why everybody's so upset that he bought it. Yeah. Like, I mean, to I me, think, I feel like it's going to be the exact same thing. I think Elon Musk is a shithead troll billionaire fuckface who in no way, like he doesn't care about freedom of speech at all. Um, but and he's just like a disingenuous blowhard, but like mm -hmm. I don't, I don't care if he's if he's owns Twitter or Jack Dorsey owns Twitter, or fucking Mark Zuckerberg, or, um, like it's not, it makes zero difference in my day to day life. There the are, reason... okay, sorry, I was nope. going to say there are a few things that people should be worried about Elon Musk taking over Twitter that they aren't bringing up, like what. Like his authenticate all humans thing. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. Like he wants it to be that you have to, that you have to prove that you're a human once and then you get some sort of Twitter license that you have to use. And it's just like this weird digital passport thing. I'm just favorite trying to sidestep in. And then the fact that his grandpa got kicked out of Canada for trying to launch a technocracy. Yeah. Like nobody is caring about that sort of thing. Yeah. Like they're all just scared. He'll let on people they don't like back onto Twitter. Yeah. Culture war bullshit. It's like, yeah. I don't know people with opinions. I disagree with get to come on Twitter and express those opinions down. It's like, well, dude, the way Twitter works is you just don't fucking follow those people. Mm -hmm. And like that, that's basically it. Like if you don't want to see the opinions you don't like, don't follow them. Yeah end of story it's mm -hmm. that easy you don't you can you can block people if you really don't want to see their opinions and then you don't run the risk of their bullshit accidentally getting retweeted into your timeline how many people do you have blocked right now uh, we we talk about this every couple of weeks and i'm curious good check it's it's pretty rare i blocked a bunch of people during the uh the um my pseudo cancellation because uh, I was just like, I'm not fucking I blocked a couple of people like it's all people who I know personally, I think, for the most part. <laughs> what? What are you looking at? No, it's just funny that you blocked people, you know, yeah, like people who I have, like who I know personally, who I just like think are obnoxious or like would rather not have to engage with their bullshit anymore. How do I yeah, fucking... see? My fear is anyone who I think is obnoxious. I feel like if I block them, it'll just be more obnoxious because oh, I feel like they'll be like, oh, look who blocked me, Bork, Bork. Block the counts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, where seven, did you go to see that? Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There's some weird ones on here. 16, 17, 18, that you've 19, blocked? 20, 21, 22. What? 
Yeah, there's like I've blocked like 30 accounts. Where are they? Where do you see them? Uh, if you go to like, are you on Twitter right now? I'm, yeah, I'm on the app on my phone because the click. the laptop Twitter is the Outrage Factory Twitter, and I haven't. Oh, I don't know about the app. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, um, hold on. But like looking at these accounts, they're all like people I know personally who I find incredibly obnoxious or like political, like whatever people who I'm just like, you fucking suck and I never want to see your shit. Like Clay yeah. Travis is on there. Who? Uh, Clay Travis. Who's that? He's just like uh, sports uh this like fucking sports personality who's like just this obnoxious republican shit not even republican i don't know what the fuck these guys call themselves now because they're not like i have no problem with like republicans who are actually republicans but he's like one of that breed of like the i don't know the ones who are like the shithead culture war trolls who are just like oh i'm gonna fucking trigger some libs today uh mike cernovich is on there that guy fucking sucks uh and then it's like uh my ex my ex's mom uh which ex what the the ones that that was mom oh uh yeah and Uh colter when she listens to this you blocked ann colter yeah dude fuck (laughs) every once in a while she has a good zinger so i follow her and then this random person who i do not but there's also there have been say their name out loud i want to know who it is I like I don't know who it is. I'm I'm say looking their, at their thing. Say their Twitter handle. handle. No, I'm not going to say their Twitter handle. I don't want anyone going tweeting. Oh, Rebel News is blocked. Uh, that Twitter one was handle. like a long time ago. Thankfully. Okay, um, where do you go to find out if they're blocked? Uh, well, so I'm looking at desktop right now. Yeah. Hold on. I don't even have the mobile app installed on my phone, so I'm not going to be able to hear. If you go Ooh, to where Twitter involved, installed, can you go to your settings? Yeah, I think so. Okay, hold on. Pulling it up. I'm at settings. Yeah. Okay. So there should be an option there for privacy and safety. Yeah. And then there should be an option there for mute and block. Yeah. Oh, blocked and then accounts. Blocked accounts. Yeah. Go oh, on I have in. two. Go on in. Oh. Who? Do, oh, curious. What does one have to do to earn a block from Dale? Okay, so I have a fucking ton muted though, where I'm just like, I don't want to block you, but I there don't is want to this ever guy hear named you. Daniel K. Banks. Uh huh. It's not followed by me or anyone I'm following. Uh huh. Oh, I can view the tweets. Uh. Oh, I actually don't have that many people muted. I'm more people. Oh, this guy hasn't muted. tweeted since 2013. They can come off the block list. I'm not taking him off. I obviously blocked him for a reason. <laughs> He's gonna and come back. There's Leela Bryan, who I have been have had blocked since 2012. Or they haven't tweeted since 2012. Okay. Oh, all her all her tweets are ads, so she's probably just a drive by like ditch people. Yeah, you could tell whenever somebody's whose only tweets or replies that they're only on there to fucking try pick fights. Yeah. So yeah, I've had two blocked accounts from nine years ago. I don't have any muted words. And I have one muted account that I don't remember muting. You only have one muted account? Yeah. Your Twitter must be a fucking cesspit. I just don't follow enough people and I only have 600 followers so my twitter's pretty calmsville like yeah, i know if twitter's the tw- if twitter's the town square calm. of the internet mine's in the suburbs i doubt it's that cause... calm i know some of the people <laughs> who follow you they like to get angry about stuff all the time yeah i don't see them all the time good good damn damn so final final ruling on elon buying twitter whatever yeah, me too. <laughs> that's, that's my ruling. Like, I'm like mostly indifferent. Like, I fucking I despise Elon Musk as a human being. I just think he's a generally shitty person. But like, I, I don't. I just I feel like he should be for how rich he is and all the shit he's got his fingers in. But it's like, like he'll just tweet and I'll like his tweets. I'll be like, oh that guy. He I just mean, seems he's not- like. 
he's just like it's weird because it's almost like he has to be a bad guy for how powerful and rich he is but he's either like he's either secretly evil or secretly secretly an alien he's not that secretly evil. because he and he's also not secretly an alien he's like highly autistic and yeah. uh and also not very like he just like i don't think he understands people very well and he it's because he's uh, too busy solving the world's problems doesn't under no i don't people. know what what world's problems he's solving the beyond. electric he like tricked people into liking the electric car through he capitalism did, like, he was dope he he drove like this mass adoption of electric cars but elon yeah. Musk didn't do that because he gives a shit about the planet elon oh, no, Musk he did only... that because he recognized a business opportunity oh yeah <laughs> like elon Musk. Yeah, cares. that's he... that's what i mean he tricked us all into liking electric cars through capitalism like what he well, did with his trucks yeah he like he made it so you only had to do a 250 dollar like dedic like whatever like a uh, pre-buy so you're like you say i want a truck you give 250 dollars and then you get first crack at the truck and then like so many million people did that and then he turns around and goes to the bank and he's like look i have all these dedications to buy once it comes to production so give me this giant loan so he takes the giant loan and just puts it in a different business because there's still no trucks and then he does shit like um there's this thing in europe where each car manufacturer has to sell electric cars to get like some sort of tax break so he goes to like honda and he's like hey i'll let you sell te teslas exclusively if you give me piece of your tax break and they're like sure so he just gets to sell his cars and this free money out of nowhere yeah. so he just does like loophole backdoor f capitalism shit like that yeah and a lot of shady backdoor like fucking uh basically like pumping and dumping that's why i was like i was so convinced that like his offer to buy Twitter because yeah. he was like, he bought a fucking ton and he's done this with, uh, with like, uh, like crypto shit before as well. Right. Like he'll buy yeah. a bunch of something, then mm -hmm. he'll do something to artificially inflate the value of the thing he just bought. And then he'll turn around and sell it all and fucking just make a ton of money. So mm -hmm. he became a like giant shareholder in Twitter and then yeah when he bought nine percent i think it was something like that and then he turned around and offered to buy the company which i assumed was just elon musk doing the thing where he's like i'm gonna announce this yeah and then the stock is gonna shoot up and then i'm gonna sell all my stock and then i'm gonna invent a reason for the deal to fall through and that could still play out like who the fuck knows but elon but musk dude, is like the stock didn't go up when he announced that because I, I was like oh he's gonna buy twitter so i bought i think let me tell you how much money of Twitter I bought. Well, probably didn't go out if you bought after the announcement, you dipshit. That's true. That's not how you invest. No, it went down is what I'm saying. So I <laughs> currently hold $13.11 US worth of Twitter stock. And it is gone down 6% since I bought it. Okay. But like, so when did they announce this? Like a week ago? Does this a say week, when I bought it? Because I bought it the same day, I think. What happened on because I'm looking at the uh the stock chart here on uh on April 1st, the stock was $39. On April 4th, it was $49. So it gained about 30%. Uh oh, yeah, that would have been right after I bought it. Uh, or right, right before right after I bought you it. bought it? No, right before I bought it. Sorry. Oh uh, yeah, no, you should have bought. You should have bought when it was. <laughs> and then yeah, there was a little spike to like fifty one on uh, on the twenty fifth, which is when I think they announced the the Musk. Uh, oh yeah, Musk they buyout. they had accepted his because first he said I'm going to buy it for what forty two, and then they're like fuck off, and then they're like wait. We like money. How about 45? And then Elon's like 44. And they're like, all right, you could buy it. But they still, it still hasn't. Why hasn't it gone through? Like legal stuff has Oh, it's not gonna yet? close. Yeah, it's gonna take fucking forever. Like, I think if they said it's gonna close uh by October, November, maybe. Oh, this year that's so far to. away. Yeah. And there's like there was I saw this lawyer on Twitter doing this breakdown of like the whole contract and like 
there are reasons that either side could terminate the deal. Um, so I'll like, I'll, I'll wait and see, like, this could be, uh, this is anything with Elon Musk is ever far from is far from a sure thing. Like, yeah, there, there could be a zillion reasons this deal falls through. Um, so we'll see what happens. The thing I do like about Elon Musk deals and shit is they just like, they're always crazy. And it always just happens. Like when he was like, uh, why don't I just drill holes under Los Angeles so I can make like this like weird thing for cars to get on a sled and drive around? And you're like, what? And he's like, oh yeah, I did it. They just said I could. And you're like, wait, what? You're fine. And then he's like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this thing where I launch satellites into space and then just have the internet. And then it's like, there's like thousands of those now because he just like fucking shot them all up right away. It's well, just, yeah, he says so, he's gonna do something, then it's done, and you're like, "What the fuck?" Sometimes it's like it's good, and you're like, "Wow, this is like kind of genius." Like, why weren't we doing this all along? And sometimes hmm. it's like I'm gonna take you know billions of dollars from state governments to build the fucking hyperloop that fucking never like. He's like, I I saw someone, and they were basically explaining why like you know there's high speed rail all over China, there's high speed rail all over Europe. Uh, the reason there's no high speed rail in the United States is because we could have started developing this and like building it like 10, 15, 20 years ago. But Elon Musk was like, nah, fuck that. I'm going to bring this hyperloop along and it's going to be a zillion times better and more cost effective and cheaper. And so we got a bunch of people to like buy and invest in that and kneecap the high speed rail industry. And then it just didn't materialize. Oh, really? Like at all. Yeah. I didn't hear about this. So it's basically what like the tire companies did to electric tra trams and got rid of all those. So people would have to buy buses and tires for their. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think that Elon Musk did it being like, I'm going to fuck over high speed rail. I think he yeah. legitimately believed he was going to be able to build this thing, but he doesn't have anyone reining him in and being like, can you really do that? Is that really a good idea? Um, what was that high speed rail thing that crashed? on the first time they used it from like which seattle one? which one there was something where they're going to seattle and they're like this is the inaugural run and then it crashed and let me just let me give that a quick goog a little goog a train i mean we crash. made it half an hour without googling anything so that's pretty good 2017 washington train derailment yeah the amtrak cascades passenger train yeah was that a high speed train or is it just a regular so. one i don't think they have high speed trains anywhere in the states I the inaugural the... run. Oh, it was just a new route. It wasn't oh. a. Uh, yeah. It wasn't high speed. It was just, but it was still the inaugural run, right? Yeah, it was. Probably the last run. Also, sorry, sorry, train route. <laughs> the one off. Just a one time. Yeah. You can get a T-shirt saying you were there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, if Elon Musk be owning Twitter really pisses you off, uh, which probably applies to a not insignificant amount of people on Twitter what you can do about that is deactivate your Twitter account and then yeah. just not tweet any, because like you can bitch about it, but literally every time you log into Twitter, you're making Elon Musk more money. Mm -hmm. So if you really don't agree with them that much, just, just delete, yeah, just delete, get your off. Account. delete your account. You should probably leave Twitter anyway, if it yeah. makes you mad. Yeah. Yeah, that's that you should probably if it makes you mad or not, you should probably leave Twitter anyway. <laughs> just yeah, just leave shit. Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. You're not liking them. Yeah. I don't have enough followers anyway. So everybody just leave. Yeah. Everyone I'm going to call there. it 2022, May 1st. Twitter was a failure. <laughs> I've been on there for 14 years. Yeah. I'm not famous. 14 years. Holy or shit. 13. One of the two. It's been a long fucking time. I recently got one of those notifications that was like, Hey, happy birthday. Celebrate your Twitter anniversary. And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to celebrate. And then There's you like, look at it there. and you're like, how the fuck is over a decade past celebrate. since I signed up to Twitter? Celebrate your addiction to the world's most useless yeah. websites. Your uh, addiction. Hey, speaking of toxic environments. Yes. How about this Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial, baby? Amber turd. <laughs> Do you remember what episode we talked about this? Because when pooped. it came out, it was the last. She, 
No, we talked about this like years ago. Oh, the pooping one. Yeah. No, yeah. that was that was that was a while ago. Were we early on the Amber Heard pooping on the bed thing? Because this is like just exploded where it's like everybody's like he tur he per he, she pooped on the bed and all these like hot takes and comedians are like, Can you believe that? And I was like, We already knew this. We already knew that. Not everyone is as dialed in on the celeb news as us, Dale, but uh, mm -hmm. I think it's because their televised trial is becoming such a fucking media circus. I'm seeing yeah, like Johnny Depp said it in court. So I guess that's why I'm seeing like, you know, I log on to TikTok and I see like a fucking dozen like clips of the yeah. Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. And it's mostly Johnny Depp just like sitting there looking smug or like laughing about shit. Um, and being a total G, he's coming off looking amazing from this, by the way. He's like, so he is, he is a fucking incredibly charming guy. Like, wow. It's almost like he's one of the world's most highly paid actors because he's so good at acting and getting people to like him. Yeah. It's like, he's, <laughs> he literally gets paid to be charming. So I don't know why, mm. like Amber Heard's legal team ever thought that televising this trial would be a fucking good idea. Were they um, the ones who wanted it? I would assume that both parties have to consent to it for something like this to happen. Like, yeah, if, if one of them would have said no, then I, I have to assume it, they wouldn't have gone forward with it. Uh, so is but, this like a civic trial? Uh, yeah, it's a it's a civil it's a civil suit because, oh, okay. yeah, it's a, it's a lawsuit. It, this isn't even the like this isn't a criminal trial about the abuse. This is a civil trial about. And I don't, I can't remember which way it goes. I don't know which one's the plaintiff okay. and which one's the defendant. I'll tell you what happened. Johnny Depp sued her for $50 okay, so million is... dollars for defamation and, and it... affecting his career. And then she countersued, she countersued for $100 million. So which one is it? So this is basically the like, this is Johnny Depp's lawsuit against Amber Heard. But if yeah. Amber Heard wins this one, then she also wins the damages that she is seeking from the countersuit. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. So basically he's suing her for defamation libel or whatever because she ruined his Pirates of the Caribbean career when she said he beat her up. And it, like it's looking like she did all the damage to him. Y like, yeah. Well, like before, when it was just like she shot on your bed on his bed, it was like, ha, 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 that's silly. These crazy actors. And then you find out she threw vodka bottles at him and like almost cut off his finger. And you're like, what the fuck? And then he like wrote with his bloody stumpy finger like it didn't cut it all the way off. But I guess it was like you could see the bone. And then he wrote on the wall in his blood. I can't remember what he wrote, but you're just like, what the fuck? Yeah. So that's um. So that's my take on it. Like, I think, um, and this is a question, Kate. At. Like, I think they were both abusive. I think they were both mm -hmm. toxic. I think they were yeah. both awful people who brought out the worst in each other. Yeah. Um, but I was talking about this with Kate, and she was like, Well, do you think that if one of them is abusive, it means the other person wasn't? abusive like does does it diminish the abuse that they suffered if they themselves were abusive and i was like oh that's a great question like no i would say that yeah they both abused and were abused in this relationship and like overall it's just really fucking sad because you hate to hear about those things mm -hmm. happening to people but like i don't and it's extra sad because now it's spilled out into the public eye and fucking everyone gets to hear these details and like I think about some of the relationships I had and like, I wouldn't want the worst moments from those relationships. Like, fuck it. Why, why? I hope you're not going to say they're anywhere near to as bad as this shit has been. No, like, like I never intentionally, nobody's, nobody's never had their finger almost cut off. I never intentionally shit. shit. I never intentionally shit in anyone's bed. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that much. Intentionally. <laughs> Wait, did you accidentally? I never shit. intentionally shit in anyone's bed, uh, <laughs> but like, but it's still like it's it's just fucking sad and it's sad for everyone. And I do think that like, Johnny Depp, like public sentiment, is very much in Johnny Depp's side. And you hear like Johnny Depp earning the laughs in the court, and Johnny Depp like 
buddying down with the judge and like making the judge laugh and like i don't i don't think this is gonna go particularly well for amber heard which sucks because i don't doubt that she was abused uh but i also don't doubt that she was an abuser and that uh she can i'm gonna pick a side because i'm just like i'm dumb enough to stick my foot in my mouth but i'm taking johnny depp's side not because i feel like he's prince charming and he doesn't and he escapes fault free in this i'm taking his side because amber heard like what this all came about in 2017 i think it was when they got divorced so she published that she published like a blog article or like an interview or something saying how abusive johnny depp was and then that basically derailed johnny depp's a bunch of his movies including the pirates of the caribbeans and stuff and so i want him to sue her i don't think johnny depp needs 50 million dollars i just want him to be able to be back in movies because i want to see more johnny depp movies now this sucks for amber heard because she was super good in aquaman and her acting chops really carried her through that role and helped Jason Momoa. Well, Johnny, <laughs> true. Uh, Johnny Depp doesn't. De- Johnny Depp doesn't need to win this lawsuit to be. In I want more Pirates again. of the Caribbean, Derek. That's yeah, all I care studio, about. The studios can just hire. You can decide to hire Johnny Depp. I can't unless he wins. They can even if he wins. And here's the problem with this trial: is all the shit that's coming out in this trial. Yeah. I don't think a studio like Disney is going to hire Johnny Depp when there's That's like a, a zillion clips out there talking about the drugs he does and like the non-family friendly shit he's been up to. <laughs> like, That's true. Any studio could have fucking, they could have said, you know, we and like sports teams do this all the time. The fucking NFL is notorious for like a guy will beat the shit out of his wife or girlfriend and the NFL is like, you know, we're going to conduct our own internal investigation. Mm-hmm. And we we take this very seriously. And then they do their own fucking little shitty, like, investigation for show. And then they, you know, no, suspend Derek, that's the a guy. Good point. I'm going to boycott the NFL because they suck. And, the, and then they suspend <laughs> a guy for three games. And they're like, you know, this is what our investigation found. We were, mm, uh, true. we're going to stand. We're going to stand by our player. We're going to put him in some uh, domestic violence counseling and we hope we hope he does better. And we're going to we're going to keep on top of this. And that's like any studio could have done that with Judy with Johnny Depp. They could have been like, here's the shit we're going to do for show that doesn't solve the problem at all. Mm -hmm. And, you you know, if if you don't fucking Disney, especially is like, oh, you don't agree with something Disney does. Okay, well, fucking don't watch a Disney movie or buy a Disney toy or go to a Disney park or like check out. And like, if you bought something today, there is like a 50% chance some of that money went to Disney. It doesn't matter what you (laughs) bought. If you bought a fucking car, some of that money might've gone to Disney. So like good, Disney could easily do this. And if there was like mass outcry and boycotts, like fucking like there is right now. Oh my God. Oh this yeah, like thing. the whole Disney thing. This is another thing that we need to get into that I'm surprised egg? we haven't discussed because it's like, and this is like the most insane outcome of a of, uh, fucking entire decade of insane culture war bullshit. Is yeah. This fucking, this, this groomers argument that is happening now where it's like any discussion of kids sexuality or any discussion of sex with children or any of discussion of like supporting children's sexual identity, you're just getting like called, you're getting accused of grooming children. And uh, it's fucking wild to me. So like, it's gotten to a point now where like, you know, one day Noah's going to come to me and ask me questions about sex because he's curious. And I'm going to be like, fuck off, buddy. Figure it out on your own. I ain't no fucking groomer. Like, do not fucking- Noah already older than all the stuff they had like because it's like i was like you was like well, what the fuck just let them talk about this but the, wasn't it specifically against talking to him from kindergarten to grade three what like the whole don't say gay bill wasn't it for just you're not allowed to talk about sexuality with the kids when they're five to eight years old even then I thought that's, that's fucking, what it was you can't say hey there's gay people in the world no i don't want anybody if I had a five-year-old, I wouldn't want straight people talking about straight sex with my five-year-old in the classroom either. 
But it's not talking about sex. It's talking about sexual orientation or gender identity. That's it. You're not talking about how these people fuck. You're talking about the fact that gay and lesbian and transgender and LGBTQ plus people exist. And that's it. And just by acknowledging- I don't think that's it. I think it's more to it than that. It can't be just that all gay people exist. So you're not allowed to tell grade like six-year-olds that. The law's central language reads classroom instruction by school personnel or third parties on sexual orientation or gender identity may not occur in kindergarten through grade three or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students in accordance with state standards. Nothing about fucking in there. It is talking about sexual orientation and gender identity. Okay. All right. So the, okay. Okay. So, okay, so they're right. I thought for some reason it was talking about like sex and stuff. Yeah. The way so, the people talk about it. So, I think, yeah, stuff. well, that's the c- culture war bullshit. It's like mm-hmm. you need to be angry and outraged about this because they are trying to groom your children. And there's people, yeah. and like uh, there are a lot of people out there like you who I'm sure are convinced that there are teachers in Florida who are rolling out uh old vhs tapes of gay couples fucking and showing them to grade ones uh to educate them on gay sex because this is how they have portrayed it in the media but that's not the fucking like that's not that is not what's happening and so as a byproduct of like all these people banging the outrage drum about this you have all these people reacting this actually is very similar to the uh the what the fuck was it the oh my god what's the racism the the um critical race theory where it's oh like god criti- <laughs> critical race theory is being like racism exists like that that's the whole thing and well, people were like it's more than that it's not it's saying racism Dude, exists are you talking about that, the math books or whatever what well like this happened in Florida too with the math books that they rejected because it had like critical race theory in the math problems. Yeah. But it's like the whole crux of critical race theory is like acknowledging that racism exists and that a lot of the social and political structures we have are inherently racist. And like all of that shit is true, but Mm -hmm. the way it's been portrayed is that they're in uh, they're basically in class with like, Black Panthers on stage or on at the front of the class, like rallying up people against the whites. Actually, which is like- actually, it's kind of funny because like I read one of the pro- one of the problems that was in the book and is basically was like, this is the percentage of people who are on the wrong side of racism. And then it had like an age breakdown and it showed like old people are out of touch and racist by this much percentage. And it's like you could have just had like how many apples is a percentage of the whole bucket instead of like old people being racist and stuff. So it was just like, it was almost like it was trolling and then just being like, Oh, this is critical race theory. And it's like, well, why is this in the math problems? Well, how is that? Just do pieces of a full. Yeah. And that's what we should do. We should all make sure that we're not talking about anything that offends white straight people's delicate sensibilities. No, I'm just saying, why even crack that nut in this Cause problem? Because it was because it was a social statistics question. <laughs> like it's talking <laughs> about social demographics specifically. Yeah, and for math issue. when you don't need to. But you do need to. You do need to talk about that shit. It wasn't a social statistics course. It was just a math course, and that was one of the example problems. So why why is it a problem that that would be an example problem? If just I'm because like, it seems like you're trolling the cons, just being like, this will piss off cons if I put this in my math book. If I was like, OK, let's talk about what percentage of NHL players are Swedish born. It's like nobody's going to be like, whoa, we don't need to talk about that. Let's talk no, that's about completely Lego different. Bricks. It's How completely different? different because it would be like what percentage of it would be basically be like what percentage of. NHL players are on the wrong side of history because they're old and racist and out of touch. That's what the wording would be. It a wasn't pre- like a pretty significant one, I would <laughs> yeah. say. So the problem isn't that it's just this like to me, it's like this weird 
we're trolling the cons with these questions when we don't need to be. So it's like, kind of like, okay, I get like, there's no reason like, sure. You should be able to say how, what age demographic is more racist than the other, but I don't see why you have to point that out in math. Why would a textbook company yeah. that makes educational textbooks yeah. be trolling the cons? Why Exactly. Why would they? Well, but why would they? Why couldn't it have just been like a question that they put in there and they're like, this is something that we can use to demonstrate this one example instead mm -hmm. of the cons looking at it and being like, this is an attack on us because we have this perpetual victimhood complex. Why not just look at it and be like, this is a question that made it into this book. Like it has nothing to do with us at all. Why does it need to be a troll on the cons from a writer of educational textbooks? I don't know why they would do it, but they did. They did. They and it did. pissed the cons off so much that they banned the book. Yeah. Which is fucking ridiculous. Like it's all ridiculous. Yeah. It's fucking insane to me that like, and this wasn't I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not saying the cons are right here. I'm just saying don't poke the fucking bears who are looking for any excuse to get butt hurt and upset about anything. You don't really need to point out that they're all out of touch in your math problems when you could just use percentages of apples. Instead. So, so, so in this case, you're pro censorship. No, you're saying you're saying educational textbook writers should self censor so that they don't offend people in government. No, I'm saying educational math book users should not intentionally antagonize old people. So they should self censor. Yeah. <laughs> the schmarmy guy who's like some guy in some back room who's writing this math problem shouldn't be like, hey, hey, hey this will piss some people off. I'm All really right. going to. Pull, I'm going to own the cons on this one. Yeah, but I honestly do not think that's uh, that's what actually happened at all. You think they're just like, well, this is totally matter of factly. We're going to talk about how old people are out of touch and racist, and this will be perfectly fine. Yeah, like I think when I read the fucking, I got to hold on. Let me find the uh, let me find the shit here. 54 yeah. math textbooks. I'm not I saying that people should self-center. I'm just saying I, I miss the days when math was math and not some politically charged thing. Here, the department states 41% of the submitted textbooks. So it's 54 out of 132 submitted textbooks. Mm -hmm. And they included references to critical race theory. Yeah. Common core. What's common core? It was, I, I don't know. I need to get Kate to explain it, but it's like basically the like <laughs> standardized... Uh, some like standardized form of education or something. Oh, is that States. the thing where it's like different ethnicities score less because it's all standardized testing? Is it like that argument or, or is that the opposite of that? Yeah, that, that might be it. Wait, and the other Jesus, the third the thing, comments are blowing up. The third thing, the third thing, yeah, critical race theory, common core, and social emotional learning, and all of these things are are unacceptable in math books. And they say it's mm -hmm. due to an attempt to indoctrinate students, which is an insane fucking belief. I don't it know. I'd insane. have to see more it examples because I no. saw the one example of the problem. Let me see. Okay. You, okay. I just want to see. It's insane to believe that a high school student or student at any age is going to see a math problem and be indoctrinated by it. That is not something a logical human being would ever believe. I don't know. It's I not. feel like you can indoctrinate people. Through it's their it's texts. crazy. No, it's crazy culture war bullshit, man. Like there's zero percent chance. Do you do you remember a single math question from your entire school, like K through grade twelve, entire school career? Um, single math problem. Do you remember a single math problem you encountered? I remember how I learned greater than less than, and it was that the alligator eats the bigger school of fish. It wasn't the alligator believes that some students have a harder time swimming through the water because of their ethnic upbringing. Yeah, no, that's pro <laughs> pro alligator propaganda. Yeah. Okay. I found the one I think I was talking about. 
the bar graph shows the differences among age groups on the implicit association test that measures levels of racial prejudice, racial prejudice, higher scores indicate stronger bias, which is fine. But why the fuck is this in a math book? Why? Like, because it's statistics. That's part of math. Yeah, but why what? do you need to know these statistics? Why wouldn't you need to know? They're fucking statistics. Why wouldn't? What's so offensive about these statistics? Okay, measuring racial prejudice by political identification. So it's saying very liberal. It was a score on the implicit association test, and it goes from twenty six to forty six. So I'm going to link this picture into the comments. So people can know what I'm talking about. And if you're listening to this, I'm sorry. And if you're watching this on video, you'll have already seen this, but it's, it's the problem is it's kind of blurry. So you can't really make everything out. So it's saying. Listen, association test that measures. Okay. Yeah. So it's just like, it's like the data in these graphs can be described by following the polyminal model of degrees or whatever. And it's all this percentage stuff. And it's like, for me, it's like, why even have like the age of racial prejudice as your math example? Why, why, why not? Why wouldn't you have that? It's a, it's a statistic, like any other statistic. I, and it's, and I think the cons are upset because in because the people, example, all the slightly conservative, the moderately conservative, and the very conservative are all more or showed way more racial prejudice than the other ones. Yeah, but that's also like that's not an accident. That that is true in social science. <laughs> like it's not. This doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so looking at the bar graph, it has very liberal, moderately liberal, slightly liberal, neutral, and then three degrees of cons. So you go from very liberal is 26 on the score on the implicit association test. And then you have slightly conservative is 37. Moderately conservative is 42, but then very conservative is less than moderately conservative. Yeah. So are moderately conservative people more racist than very conservative people? Yeah. And slightly liberal people are more racist than than people who don't identify with either one looking at this. Yeah. So I would say that like, no, it's, it's useful. It's a useful. It's useful for societal and like political science and knowing that conservative people are usually more racist than liberal people, but I just don't get why it's in the math part of our, I'm sorry. Do you believe that the only people who should give a shit about implicit bias and racism are political science majors? No, I'm saying nobody else should ever acknowledge or discuss it. When I'm saying when you have graphs of racism, the racism breakdown of society, you don't really put those in math. You put those in humanities where we study humanities. Math should be the study of numbers. Dale, you know, people, people in humanities in American public schools are not learning about racial, like, and nor will they ever. So- well, what I mean is like, if I go to math, I'm like, sweet numbers, not like, oh, great. I get to learn how racist society is yet again, like I learn in every other class. Like, I'm not trying to say that society isn't racist and people shouldn't learn about how racist society is. I'm just saying, why is this in a math book? It's just an excuse for a conservative to get rid of the math book. Because it's not being taught anywhere else. It's not being taught in any other subject. So you're telling me they got to sneak in all the racial teachings into math because it's not making it into political science. Yeah, they've been, this isn't, do they have political science in American high schools? Uh, No, No. but they have social studies. Yeah. That's where you talk about racism and stuff. Wait, I, I know we've got Kate in the comments right now. Kate, can you tell me if you talked about racism at all in uh, in your social studies classes? I just don't know why you're talking about this in math. Because like, you should be because there shouldn't be a place 
where we'd say, oh, it's not safe to talk about this thing. That's fucking censorship. No, the like, thing is, you should be focusing on numbers, not giving politically charged subjects in math class so people can get distracted by the racial problems of the whole world instead of sol solving what pi but is. But why would circle. anyone be distracted by that? Why would anyone not look at that problem and say, okay, they, these are numbers. The questions underneath refer to the calculations in the numbers. This is yeah. an example of a graph. We're supposed to use this to solve the numbers. Yeah. This isn't indoctrinating anyone. This isn't yeah, it is. prompting a discussion. This is telling everybody that conservatives are more racist than liberals. This is that's telling indoctrinating everyone them. facts. It might be true, it's, <laughs> but that's still indoctrination. It, it's indoctrination to give people access to unfiltered actual yeah. statistics yeah see i think the conversation shouldn't be whether this should be or not be in math it's like why the fuck aren't they learning this in social studies and everywhere else in the humanities it also says 65 year old 65 plus are the most racist that's what i meant before when i was saying the old people are the most racist anyways i i don't know like yeah People should know who's racist or whatever, because I thought we were also not supposed to profile and judge groups by members of that group or whatever. But anyways, well, that's why it's not I just saying, don't see why this is in math. It's not saying this is a guidebook for how you should profile these people. And this is like true of all the people in these groups. It's literally saying here is a graph. Here's some mm -hmm. numbers that these studies found. Use these numbers to solve the other problems, which are also about numbers. It would take someone with holes punched in their brain to look at this and say, this is indoctrinating children to believe all conservatives are racist. It, it would is. take a conservative culture. And war. old people. No, fuck no. We implicitly know old people and conservatives are more racist than young liberals. We know that. That's been an accepted part, like, that's been an accepted belief everywhere for years. years. Do you hear something fucked up about these graphs? What? So the most racist people on the implicit association test are 65 plus. Guess what the second most racist age group is? 18 to 20, 24 year old. Yeah, you just looked at the number, didn't no, you? No, actually, I didn't. <laughs> that was yeah, that did. was full on a guess. No, I, no did, I didn't look. You wouldn't have known it was 18 that was to 24. Oh, yeah, you... I would fucking, because it's the pendulum <laughs> swinging, right? We had like Oh, so you just girls. knew that the age group was broken down into six years? Yeah, I know demographic age groups because I read fucking <laughs> textbooks, Dale. I know oh, one so you're just defending these textbooks because you've already been indoctrinated yeah, yeah, by I'm, these textbooks? I'm, I'm in big textbooks, fucking... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the textbook companies are giving me money for this. I mean, <laughs> I'm in big lib pockets where I big shill lib. critical race theory in math problems. The I other don't even thing, think, honestly, if this graph went the other way and it was like disparaging to liberals, I wouldn't have a fucking problem with it then either. Because I'm what? not saying there's a problem because one side is disparaged. I'm saying, why do we have to learn about this in math? Because we should problem. be learning, we should be learning about everything everywhere all the time, especially fucking high school kids. High school kids should have access to way more information than they currently have access to. And what is this implicit association test? What? It's like it's that it's it's like this test that they refer to that I guess judges your inert racism and stuff. We should we take, should take this it. test. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see how implicitly oh, racist I am. Holy shit. Can we do this right now? Yeah, Project let's do it right implicit. now. Okay. Oh wait. my God. I want to find out how racist I, I wish am. to proceed. Okay. I'm going to post it. Everyone who's with us on the Facebook thing. I want everyone to take this test with us right now and share yeah. your results. Okay. Did you link it? I'm linking it. <laughs> Andrea wrote in the content. Dale's not racist. He's with an indigenous. Oh, woman. the old, I have an indigenous girlfriend. Oh, I argument. never said yeah. it. That's why oh, I said it's. Oh, I couldn't be racist. That's I why have it's an indigenous funny girlfriend. because like a lot of people <laughs> use that as their defense. Okay. Where's the test? Hey, did oh, you click I it? Wish, oh, yeah. There's proceed. like. Oh, wait. Oh, fuck. Um, there's so many here. Ability, skin tone, gender, science, religion, presidents, native, race. Oh my God. Race. Okay. Hold on. Oh, what? Okay. Where did they get their numbers from? Hold on. Oh, oh these I, are I, just like uh, gender. 
Uh, skin tone? Let's do skin tone. Okay. Okay. I'm doing, so I'll do I'm skin doing the tone. skin tone one. Okay. okay I'm doing skin tone Continue. too. Continue. What is okay. my birth month? August. What is your birth year? 1980. What is your birth month? July. What? Ooh. 79. Ooh. What? Oh, wow. Did, you already, fucking... did I already tell you you're racist? No. Oh, okay. So this question, first question right out the gate. Yeah. Which statement best describe you? I strongly prefer dark skin people to light skin people. I moderately prefer dark skin people to light skin people. I slightly prefer dark skin people to light skin people. I like light skin people and dark skin people equally. I slightly prefer light skin people to dark skin people, et cetera, et cetera. Is there an option for don't prefer? Uh, there's a decline to answer. Aren't slightly prefer? Well, the, I, I like light skin people Wait, and dark skin people. Equally. Am I on the same one as you? Because I my first question is, Next, you will use the E and I computer keys to categorize terms into groups as fast as you can. These are four groups and the items that belong to each. Which one did you do? Hold on. I did. I thought I picked the skin tone one. Hmm. Let me go back a sec. Did you Maybe take the all... race one? Maybe they're all different. I don't Wait, know. Wait, did you take skin tone? Uh, yeah. Maybe the skin tone one. It's asking me a bunch of questions about skin tone right now. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you for being here. Oh, maybe it's... So, if these questions are different, like, if you're getting different questions than me, how are we supposed to compare? Oh, implicit association test. Next, you will use the E&I computer keys to oh, okay. categorize items into groups as fast as you can. So, I had to answer a bunch of questions first. Oh, really? I didn't get that far. Categorize Put a finger on the E and the I key for items okay. that belong in the category. There are some parts. Okay. <laughs> e is the category okay. light skin people. I is the category for dark skin people. So we're just picking which one we think the category is. Oh, shit. Here we Jesus go. Jesus okay. Christ. Um, if you make a mistake, the red X will appear on the proper key to continue. Okay. Oh, it's just like you pick if you think the face is dark skinned or light skinned. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I got one wrong. Put a left. Did you? I, I yeah. killed that. I got every single one right. Okay. Part two of seven. Sorry to all our listeners. Because uh, <laughs> this is going to be the worst podcast episode ever. But no, uh, part we've two done seven. worse. Put a left finger on the E key for items that belong to the category bad. Put a right finger on the I key for items that belong to the category good. Bothersome. Lovely is good. Adore is good. Delightful. Sick. Good. Is bad. Oh, good. sick could have been bad. slang. Delight Hurtful, is good. Bad. Glorious, Annoy, bad. Good. Abuse, Rotten, bad. Appealing, good. Bad, Horrible, happy, bad. good. Ugly, bad. Sadness, bad. Excellent, good. Terrific, good. Cheer, Damn it, good. I put scorn Pleasure, is good by good. accident. Negative, bad. Grief, <laughs> Yucky. Bad, terrific, good, ugly. Damn it. Abuse again. Cherish. Okay. Dude, oh, does I this... crushed that one. I didn't. Well, it doesn't tell you how many you got wrong. Okay, hold on a second. Oh my God. This is Wait. crazy. Okay. It says use part, E key for light three, skinned people for bad. Per, per, part three of seven. Use the E key for light skinned people and for bad. Use the oh. I key for dark skinned people and for good. So if it's a good or a dark skinned person, you hit I. If it's a light skinned person or a bad, you hit E. I feel like this is indoctrinating me to feel that light skin people <laughs> well, are bad. Oh shit, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to come out of this hating white people. Uh, I'm I'm going to come out of this and I'm going to be just raving against CRTC. Is that what it's called? Damn it, uh, I keep getting CR them wrong. CRT? CR yeah, critical CRT. yeah, CRT, critical race. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Damn it, I've gotten so many wrong. This, this is the same as the previous part. Use the eye for dark skin. Pe okay. Exact same. Okay. Uh, oh, shit. I got one wrong. Oh, that this was, one. That was switched. my first wrong. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Why are the light skin people bad? I think this is why people got so bunged up about it. This wasn't even the test, though. Oh, shit. What is I this? That one up too. Wait, this, this is, is the test? This isn't the thing that was in the fucking book. No, but this just... is the test 
that the graph referred to because yeah, this but, is okay this so here's is the, the other thing yeah this is this is a fucking harvard university like i assume they know what they're doing oh fuck i got another one wrong stop making me talk while i'm doing this test well you gotta talk because we're potting no i don't have to do shit i just have to learn how bad white people are dude apparently we're terrible because we're on the bad side uh we're the ease where you have to click us for dude this is so hard to to skip between skin tone oh here we go words once you get to part five of seven the label change position it switches oh you know what i bet it does what this is actually pretty fucking smart i bet it's measuring how quick how much quicker you correlate good words with dark skinned people or good words with light skinned people and bad words with dark skinned people and bad words oh, with light skinned people. Oh, so and then like that just measures like, that measures your implicit uh implicit bias. Oh, or smart as fuck. you get used to which side the good and the bad go, and then so you can click it faster. Oh shit, I fucked one up. So inertly, this is going to make you seem more racist than you are because it's doing the dark skin bad after once you get good at it, you can con, con- once you get because you've already done two rounds of the test. So you're going to get used to doing the test. And then when you get the dark skin people, you're going to be able to differentiate faster because you've already done it twice. Yeah. So it's going to say that you're differentiating faster because you're racist. But that's why, see, because now the white people are good. So if your brain doesn't get tripped up by that, you can be like white good. Yeah, but see, that's what the racism is. Because we, I was getting tripped up just trying to do the E and I when white skin was bad and dark skin was good. So that took long. And now that white skin is good and dark skin is bad, I'm going to be super fast. So the test is going to think, I think all light skinned words are good and I could associate it faster. It sounds like you're hedging your bet because you already know you're racist. (laughs) No, I'm going to, I'm, this is dumb because it should have switched it right away. Why? Because I'm getting less wrong just because I'm used to doing it. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that why? Right. Oh, is that why, Dale? Dude, um, I'm getting more wrong right now. We're going to be so bad at this because we've been talking while we're doing it. We're going to look like super racists. What if we look super not racist? I mean, that could be too. Why? Who uses the word bothersome? <laughs> Maybe old people did worse on this because they're like, oh, I know that word. Oh, there's another task. I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah, dude, this is oh, taking way longer than I Sex thought. Sex assigned at birth, be current like... gender identity, submit. What is your race? White. What is your ethnicity? Not Hispanic or Latino. Oh, How is many everybody in the comments doing this too? Yeah, this is my, I hope so. What is your or political just identity? Oh, so this is where, so you do this test and yeah. then you answer your political identity. Oh my God, it's page one of 11. Hold on, there. It's one, one. It's one fucking question. Oh, what song were you assigned at birth? Uh, how religious do I consider myself? Country, like, so here's the thing, Dale. That that yeah. number, it was literally just reporting results of this test. Wait, what is is race and eth- ethnicity not the same? Because it no. says, "What is your race?" I put white, and now it's saying, "What's your ethnicity?" Hispanic or Latino? And I was like, are Hispanic and Latino people white? Uh, yeah, I think they officially account that. What is your political identity? I'm going to say neutral. What's your, what'd you put for political identity? Religious background, Protestant or other. How religious do you consider yourself? Not at all. Well, slightly religious. Okay, so here we go. I got wait, it. Wait, 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 wait. I, I don't want to. I'm not done yet. Okay. This is, is crazy. I actually, I want to spend all night doing these tests. It's just fucking wild that these exist. What is the. Ah, I don't even know my. Po- I got to know my postal code. God damn it. Now I got to look at mail. It's a good thing I never clean off my desk and I have mail right here. Okay, so this, this question in this math book was literally just people's self-reported results to this test 
Uh, I'm going to be full honest with you here. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Are you on the results page yet? No, hold on. Okay. Okay. Um, was the highest level of education you've done? Uh, please indicate your full-time, part-time job. Wait, what the fuck? I'll just go put construction. I do think you were right in that talking kind of fucked us because I was definitely paying more attention during the second half of that test. Yeah. And, uh, and now I see. Oh, what? I strongly prefer. Oh, I'm doing those questions you had to do at the beginning. Um, Because it's like I strongly prefer dark skinned people to light skinned people. Uh, oh, it just gave them I to like you in a light different... skinned people and dark skinned people. There we go. There we go. Who in their right mind would say, I strongly prefer one or the other? How what warm or cold do you feel? Racist, like racist people, people would say that, Dale, and they neither wouldn't have a problem with it. Neither warm or Oh, that's a good point. I think there's like, we should be figuring out who's in, who's like secretly racist instead of like, who's, oh, what would I prefer my skin tone to be? Uh, well, I'd I said rather, I said slightly I'd rather darker. be not pasty white. I said I think I'm whiter than most white people, and I would like to be a little bit darker. <laughs> is, was my take on myself. I'm gonna put somewhat light. I want to be darker because I want that nice almond skin tone that uh, doesn't look pink on yeah. the podcast. Like a basically last podcast episode. I was just saying about how pink I was and how terrible it was. So pink horse, pink body. After this, I got to, we got to uh, wrap it up. I have to go binge the rest of uh, Ozark season four tonight. So compared with others in my racial ethnic group, I can consider my skin tone to be compared to white people. What am I? You super white, like especially white pink's not an option on there. So just say white. (laughs) You have completed the study. (laughs) Okay. Percent of web respondents. Oh, this is web no, no. respondents. Say the part at the top where it says during the implicit association test you just completed. Your response suggested no automatic preference between dark skinned people and light skinned people. Okay, get this. Get this. Yeah. You ready for this? Yeah. During the implicit association att- test I just completed, my responses suggest a moderate automatic preference for light skinned people over dark skinned people. <laughs> so, Eric. That's is not racist. Even, the stages, the stages are, and I want to say this doesn't even necessarily mean, nor did the test results mean that these people are racist. It means that there is a implicit bias, which we all have. I just want to say it. Uh, mine was mine was moderate. So there's Slight automatic preference, moderate auto- automatic preference, and strong automatic preference uh, mm. are the three stages. So I, I fell in the middle there. That is nuts. Oh, yeah. Did I close it? Shit. This is super fucking cool. I would really uh, encourage anyone who's listening to this, head on over to implicit.harvard.edu. They have yeah. a fucking ton of these tests. Uh, and uh, you can everything. find out if you're woke like me and have risen above racism as a human being, or if you're still racist like Derek, and that's why See, he's so, so upset now if your test results had been included <laughs> in that in that graph that made yeah. it its way into a math textbook, which is all this is. This is p- test results that people took mm-hmm. that put into a, and these were self-identified political leanings. Dude, so I'm in saying, the least racist demographic of 35 to 44 year olds. Is that our... Oh, I yeah. just skewed the numbers. I get, sorry. Sorry. 35, uh, 44 does it auto report? Can we I drag can those you, down? Can you back out of it? We don't have to. We don't have to worry about it, Dale. This ain't making it into any math textbooks anytime soon. <laughs> the conservatives won. We don't have to worry about numbers. Tell us how things awesome, we don't like. How awesome would it be if there's math problems based on outrage factory? Yeah. It'd be we'll like, of the, the total 207 episodes how many times did dale or derek say the word shit it just went up one. Oh wait we said shit in the bed yeah never mind we said shit a bunch okay i gotta wrap it up okay we finished real strong there with people listening while we 
fucking completed the test for real go go do these tests they have them for everything they have it for race they have it for gender gender orientation they have it for uh it looked like there were 20 different tests there and uh, you bet your ass i'm gonna go take them all to find out while you're watching ozarks yeah because being distracted while i did it this time definitely worked out so well for me that's now i gotta go take sensitivity training or fucking something (laughs) Maybe I could use some uh, some critical race theory. Derek, yours was so bad. You now have to move to Florida. Yeah, it's, <laughs> those are my people. I don't know why I fought. Maybe it's because I saw something in them <laughs> that I see. In myself. <laughs> uh, hey, Internet, thanks for joining us for episode 207 of Outrage Factory, uh, the podcast where we look at the things that make people mad online. I've been your co-host, Derek Bolin. You can follow me on the Twitter machine at Herder. Uh, I've been your other co-host, Dale DeRuder. You can follow me on the Twitter machine at SuperDaleBot. You can find the podcast Twitter at OutrageFactPod. You can find the Gmail at Outrage, OutrageFactPod at gmail.com. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. There's a bunch of other stuff. Uh, if you like the podcast, please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get the podcast. If you really like the podcast, tell your friends about us. And if you really, really like the podcast, uh, head on over to what Redbubble and make yeah Redbubble buy some, buy some, buy some swag, buy some custom um, Dale DeRuder non-racist designs. Uh, I will put the link. Oh, the link is in the show notes. So you can just go there. A percentage of the proceeds from every sale go to Dale's indigenous girlfriend. Uh, So please, (laughs) please buy some. And, uh, you know, yeah. are you you throwing Uh, in the show now? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to put it in the Facebook chat right now. Fuck. Okay, I'll I'll we'll stop. We'll continue. We'll stop, and then once people stop paying attention, Dale will put it in the show notes when there's no one left to click on the link and buy our shit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wait, I'm doing it right now. I just gotta Google it because I can't figure. Um. Yeah. Wait. Okay, I found it. Um, Oh, also subscribe uh, to Dale on TikTok, where he will occasionally post uh, post quotes of. Or, okay. or funny stand-up jokes. I think are funny. Or funny stand-up that I've been jokes doing lately. That he thinks are funny. They, that they you've aren't. been wait. That you've been doing. Have you been doing stand-up lately? No. Every time I think of a joke that would be funny on stand-up, I'm like, well, I'm never gonna do fucking stand-up. So I just go on TikTok and I like record the one-minute joke and then. Like, do you there. tell jokes on TikTok? Yeah. Damn. Have you I not? Got- don't you, no. Do you not follow me on TikTok? No, I follow you. I just don't go on TikTok ever. I don't, That's I can't wrap point. my old person brain around it. So it's like, um, it, it's kind of like you have to like put on your blinders and just go find the stuff you want to see. Cause you can see like cool people doing like music shit, or you can get dragged into the netherverse and just see horrible, bad shit you don't want to. Yeah. Kate sounds okay. good shit all the time. That's about all the. That's I'm going TikTok to link the tiger logo with red right now. Dale's Dale's sharing it. So head on over there. There you go. Buy some Brouge. Irish factory merch. Proudly tell your friends that you listen to a podcast hosted by one guy who isn't racist at all. And one guy who's only moderately racist. There you and go. Until next week. Stay angry.